Let's go on to the year view. Um, so on the year view, think heartbeat. So the heartbeat though is the foundation of what we are and what we're trying to do. And so what a set list for a, for a church is, you can't just have, hey, this is a great new song, let's do it in January, and we'll touch it in October. That's not helpful, I don't think. Uh, we can't just say, we're gonna do the heart of worship 12 times in a row. This week, next week, the next week, and 10 more <laughs> is not helpful. And in my mind, um, I don't know what the numbers are. I don't have a scientific study for you. There's only so many songs I can keep in my head. So this is part of my heartbeat of worship right now. And I'm not really good at even words, to be honest with you. And so I have even a smaller list than most people. And I'm a worship leader, and I got a smaller list. But I only have so many that are in my general consciousness, or that I could, you start a song and go, I totally know the melody here. I do know the words, most of them. You know, and so that universe is only so big, to be honest with you. Let's maybe say it's 50 songs. Maybe. You know, you can do a numbers game and think through, and let's say you miss a Sunday. You know, you know maybe a, an average person gets to church maybe 75% of the year. You know, so now they're not even there week in and week out. Okay? Um, they can only do such a repertoire or heartbeat of songs. And I think we need to be aware of that. Year in and year out, you have so many songs you can do. I mean, maybe pick a number. 120 you should be doing in a year. Maybe. Maybe it's 99. It really depends on how many songs you're doing, how many in the set. Um, so in my mind, it's important to have this as our playlist. Um, we'll probably talk some more about that. There's a numbers game to it. If you have six songs uh, across 52 sets in a year, 312. 312 songs you will do in a given year. Uh, I know that our most frequent songs, we do about nine times in a year. The biggest songs, you know. We love song forever. Right Rainer now, we probably will do it nine to ten times this year. Okay? Uh, and then the ones that we've done before, we do less of, maybe four. But when I break it down from a numbers perspective, nine times, that's less than once a month. That's really not that often, to be honest with you. I think it would almost be better if we did it even more. Not from an oversaturation point, because you have to really be careful about that. Uh, and they'll and they'll hear it on the radio, so maybe count that as one in the week. You know, they may hear it once, uh, and so just be aware of that. I know from our our numbers, it's about nine for the major ones, and it's like two or three on the other ones. And I actually think we should do more even. You know, as we really look at it, how often are people going to be here and know the song? Because the point is, they don't say. The point is, they don't say, "Oh, forever rain." I like that song. I can tap my toe to. The point isn't, "Oh, I don't have to work about this melody. I already know it." And the point isn't, I do know how to tap my foot to this, and I know the melody, and I don't have to struggle with the words. we got to get to all of those, and now they need to be free then to worship. I mean, there's a lot of work to actually get to worship, not just a nice concert. I think so. I think it, it is hard to say, we're going to make sure this song is in your brain enough that you can actually worship through it. Not just be like, oh yeah, I remember this one. And, oh, okay, and that's how it goes. You gotta get it in their bloodstream going so they know when they come, I know this song, and I actually can engage them in the next level of worshiping through the song. So, um, <laughs> here's a note for you you need a database to do it. This is so spiritual to reference Microsoft Excel or whatever you want. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things we have to learn in the modern era. You got microphones, figure those out, amplifiers, figure those out. You don't have to use Excel, you don't have to use a spreadsheet. But I'm going to say you got to do something, okay? I like Excel. I love it. Um, we keep ours every week. I'll tell you what we do. You can morph to what you do. We have a set list, who did it, and the date. And if we did uh, orchestra or if we did a small set, we'll note that. But it's just those four pieces of data. You can only do three if you want. You can do the worship leader, the date, and the song. We have it in a spreadsheet. And every time, I'm not kidding, every time I put together a worship set, we keep a running list of actually, we have the last five years right now. We'll probably have further. But then we have that on, on one tab, and then we have one, another tab that's the last two years. I then will generally pull, I sort it by song. So I can actually, this is why I know we did it nine times, because I'll look through and be like, okay, Forever Rain is all stacked up, and these are the dates we did it. We're like, man, we've done it six times in the last eight weeks. I, I don't want to do that one right now, you know, or something like that. I, don't, I can't do that again. That is too much frequency. Um, and there's different thing, fun things you can do with this, and I'll get more than that in the set view, 
But if you don't have a database, you don't have that tool to work with. You don't know how many times you've done it. Or if you have multiple works leaders, or if you have a guest coming in, if you don't have a database to tell them these are songs we do, they're going to pick out you know, this one song that your church actually has no idea about. And that is not going to be helpful. And so I, in a funny way, I think it's really helpful. You don't have to get real in-depth with it. But keep a list when you did it, who did it, and what. Another reason we have multiple worship leaders, and so we don't want songs to become Steve's song or, oh, that's Patty's song. So, like, if I've done it the last two times, I don't touch it. And I love the song, and I want to do it. And it fits the message, I think, and it's perfect. I, I may not touch it, though, honestly. i got to find another song that's perfect. Because uh, I've done it twice, and John needs to do it, or Patty needs to do that one, you know, or something like that. Or if I do pick it, maybe I'll know I will not be leading this song. We will let... Rebecca lead this song. We'll make this a female song, so to speak, this week. Sometimes songs get categorized as male female songs. And I think it's okay every now and again to, to mess with that. We're going to make this a girl song this week. If the only guy that leads it, we'll do that. Um, Alright, keep moving. Um, mm, mm, mm. Selection, evaluation of songs. Where do we get them? I think it's important to be a part of the greater context of the church. The radio is important to know what's, what's top there. The CCLI list of the top 100. It's funny to see sometimes what's on there. You know, like, How Great Is Our God is still on there, Shout the Lord is still in the top 20. I don't know how. That's fine. Uh, it's fun just to see what's still there. Um, but there are really things that you'll see climb the list. Um, I've been really surprised at some artists that I like a lot that are more on the cutting edge or upcoming that I know are in the broader church. Their songs will actually get in there, and it will start climbing the list. You'll be like, wow, okay, like, we need to be doing that song. And honestly, you should be doing it. Um, if there's a song that is in the greater context of the, of the U.S. church, you should probably be doing it. Um, assuming it's not, I'm assuming it's not heard of, I'm assuming it's a good song, and that you can do it, but because if someone comes in, they want to sing it, or if it's in the car, they want to sing it, or they'll, your, your, um, your body of lyrics will more quickly learn it, actually, and so my, so you don't have to do as much frequency for them to get from the learning the melody, learning the words, to, I'm not actually worshiping through the song, and so that's another, that's a great reason, you don't have to do the frequency as much, or it doesn't take as long for them to be like, gosh, I don't even know the song. Uh, I, I listen to my like my favorite artist in concert or something, and they'll do a new song. It's really funny. I never like it the first time. Or you get a new CD, you're like, I don't even like this CD. I love these people. Look, why is this CD trash? Well, you listen to it three times, and now you love it. Okay. So the same thing can happen in a worship set. If you pick a song that no one's ever heard of, which I know it happened, but it's going to take more than once for people to even have an opinion about it. And so if you pull some stuff that's in the uh, broader context, it really goes a long way with that. Um, Songs to pick, um, Christ-centered lyrics, I can't say that enough. Um, again, if we're trying to deliver the product and to create a byproduct, you better have a good product. You know, you, you can make the correlation that the quality of the byproduct will be directly proportional to the quality of the product you're presenting. And I would say this from an anecdotal standpoint. For our church here, we have actually pushed the envelope in a good way of working solid, deep lyrics in our music. We've been pushing that in the last, I want to say, year to two years. It has made a difference. The quality of the product is improved. We're pushing a better, more coherent, or more deep theological message in our lyrics. There has been a direct correlation in our worship. It has been deeper and fuller. So, um, also style, topic, artist, speed. You can't do a set list of all Tomlin. I mean, you can. It might be even fine. It might be great. But don't do that. You know, <laughs> you need some other artists in there. Uh, you need um, different speeds. You need different topics. It'll be funny. We'll, we'll have, maybe we'll go through a book of the Bible. Uh, we're, we're doing Colossians right now, and uh, we had a passage all about um, any doctrines uh, dissuade you. You know, you need to be solid on it. And I'm like, what song works with this? I was like, we don't have any. Uh, we don't actually have any song that works with, you know, we have some, but not like a direct one. It's funny because uh, Mike J did uh, the Solid Rock this morning, and that's actually the one I came up with. We asked it for other reasons, but I was like, that's the song that works. On Christ, Solid Rock, and, you know, all the ground singing sound. Like, that was it. That's Colossians. Uh, and so when you're, though, prepping the song list, the, the year-long view, you need to think through that. I need different topics for different things. I need evangelistic topics. I need repentant topics. I need, you know, God is holy topics. I need revelation topics. you got to round it out, not just always the medium, medium temple rock ballad with a little grind on the side. You can't just have 20 songs like that. It doesn't work. So if you take the year perspective, you will do that. We don't have some of this, you know? I know these three songs are great, but they have the identical message, the identical type of lyric, uh, they have the identical type of sound. That is not, it's not a good diet, so to speak. Um, evaluation of songs, 
Uh, I think it's important to evaluate. Did this song work in our congregation? There are songs that I love that have bombed here. There are songs that I don't love that have been awesome here. <laughs> and I do them. And uh, it's okay. You know, I, again, I'm only my own person. I like my own things. And that's not what all the corporate will like. And I got to engage with that. I, and so we do evaluate. Is there a song we need to kick out? There are songs we have introduced and we're like, you know, that's not as solid of a product as we would like. Nothing technically wrong with it. Other churches like it. Maybe it is on the charts. But we don't love it enough. We don't love it enough to invest that song six times a year. You know, to keep it going. Uh, so we do kick out some. We have a classics list that's in the back of your folder. You'll see the classics. You'll see the current list. Uh, and we do work with that every year. What do we want to kick out? Was anything a bad decision? And we're getting better at it. Um, so some ways to evaluate a song. Is the congregation responding? Uh, is the work of the Spirit being facilitated by the song? Are people in your church requesting it? Uh, and is the worship team responding? I think it's hard to get a good feel of the congregation sometimes unless you have really good feelers out. And you're not just getting the complainers. Um, but if your worship team is responding to it, that means on stage they'll be responding to it, which means they'll be leading the congregation responding to it. And so in my mind, that's really great. Does the worship team feel this? Are they in this? Then yes, then do that one. I think that's a good way of, of, of um, assessing it. Um, also, the, a great reason to have a playlist is you can integrate this into the church. You then have guest bands come in, they know how to plug in immediately. You have small group ministries, we have these songs, and you can play those immediately. You can integrate those. Uh, before and after music, we just started looping. Uh, when we when all our worship leaders meet and we have a set picked out, we actually, um, now that's on a CD list or like a loop, it loops now in our church, before and after. And so we're again planting seeds of these are the songs we're doing, so they've heard it before now. They didn't know they heard it, or sometimes they didn't know they heard it. But right after, you know, people are just hanging around, Eric kicks the CD off. Hey, you know, Forever Rain's on like three months ago. Forever Rain, I don't even, I know that. That's interesting. Maybe we'll do that one day. And suddenly we're doing it. And they kind of already started getting used to it. So that's nice. Uh, ability for people to learn on the team. Uh, if you know what's coming up or um, uh, they've heard it other places or they see, hey, we're going to be doing this one. You should learn it. You can do that too. Um, also, I think it increases the effectiveness of sets with men's times or women's time or worship retreat. Or when you're going to break it out in any other kind of variety, if you have a consistent set list that, hey, work within this, I think it's great. You don't have to really narrow. It can be large, but at least it's still a, a really good way, a, a confined scenario, confined in a good way, of these are songs that our congregation does know.